Hi, I'm Tim. I'm Lizzie. And we are To Play or Not. To Play, a show about board games for two players. Whose tastes may differ. Hello, and today we're taking a look at The Castles of Burgundy, the new uh, reprint by Alea. This is a one to four player game by the great Stefan Feld. I say the great, we like a couple of his games. He's also very great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so this game is a it's a tile laying, worker placement, uh, set collection uh, game. Bit of dice rolling. Bit of dice rolling. Uh, the way that the game works, there's a, a, a massive um, kind of marketplace, if you like. So there are various depots with goods and, and uh, buildings for you to buy. You each get your individual area that you're trying to populate with castles and <laughs> such like mm. and it's uh, I guess Burgundy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is in France isn't it yeah I think so let's, no, let's no, say no. France <laughs> if we're wrong it's Italy we're fools <laughs> just tell us um, anyway so, uh, so you get your own board that you're trying to populate with the goods and buildings from the central area and the way that you do that is you roll dice mm -hmm. um, so the game has five phases and there yes. are five um uh, rounds in each phase and they're indicated by there's a stack of um, goods that you can buy and sell and there are five stacks of crates turned face down on the master board and those are the phases mm -hmm. and each phase you turn over the five tiles that are there and lay them out in the five rounds mm. face up yeah you've also got some of these when you start you get three uh, random oh, yeah, goods you yourself did, yeah. and you can sell these for uh, purchasing options or mm. victory points basically. Mm -hmm. Victory points is oh, the yeah. name of the game as usual. Mm -hmm. um, so the way the game works, uh, you roll a dice to see who's going to go first basically, simple. <laughs> yep. As opposed to simple who, was so the, who was the last person who went to Burgundy, which is usually <laughs> yeah. the sort of... Uh, it's a grand place like that, yeah. the last person who went to a cathedral. <laughs> That's right. Uh, the last person who built a castle. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. so you roll a dice, whoever's got the highest goes first and basically that means really it's a turn order and also you get control of the white dice you basically have two Ooh. of your colour and then a white dice. And the white dice basically um, dictates where the first good is going to go the first, into like the round, board. That's yeah. One of the rounds, so yeah. you roll your, if you're in charge, you roll your three dice, your two colour and the white one. Whatever number the white one is, the top good in that round, so the first round, that good goes into the depot numbered of that dice. The so, white dice. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's all the white that, dice, isn't it? That's, that's all that's that does. It just then. delivers the goods from the round section into the yeah, depot. Makes it random. Um, and then you've got your two dice, and the person that's going first takes their two actions, and then the person second takes their actions. Mm -hmm. You roll your dice at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say, for instance, you've got a six and a one. They enable you to do things on the board and or in your own little area, yeah. depending on what you want to do. It's entirely your choice. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, you could use a six and buy one of the hex tiles that's in the depot, number six. Number six. You could buy that, put it into your area, and it just goes into your kind of standby area. Simple enough. You could do the same with number one. You could buy a tile, a hex tile from the number one area and put it into your area. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, you can lay in a, a tile from your waiting area into your board, but it has to go into the area that is marked with that dice number. So, six for instance, you know, yeah, and it, basically your area has one building from the get-go, which is the castle in the mm -hmm. middle, oh, yeah. and you have to lay every tile off of that, and uh, every tile you lay after that has to be touching another Touch tile. tile yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you've got a six next to your castle, you could lay something next to that, mm -hmm. if it's the right colour, so you have to have the right colour item. Uh, so yellow. Yeah, you've got colour and number there. Yeah, it's that. a little bit confusing. Now you find this a little bit confusing. First of all, because yeah. there are there are colours and numbers on the main board and colours and numbers on your board, mm. and your dice are coloured, so it's a little bit kind of. I thought <laughs> if, you, if you rolled a six and you picked up a goods from the six depot, then you had to lay that d goods on a number six. But no, it's like your next roll. And then you can yeah, place or it the on. or the or other, the other dice. dice, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a bit confusing. yeah, so the colours and the numbers are a little bit confusing, but I'm not it's, used it's, to it. Yeah, but, once once yeah. you get the use of the fact they're not tied together, then you're okay. I think it's because I was so busy thinking about everything else. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> which will come to light in a, in a moment. So um, <laughs> so that's kind of the the way that you're kind of populating your board. And again, depending on what you place, you get um, different. Uh, uh, points or yeah. uh, goods or money or workers you get work and land, don't you? Uh, yeah and so depending on what you place that gives you a certain uh, um, 
action mm. collection. Yeah. Um, there is a cheat sheet again. The cheat sheet is yeah, that little, helps. It helps, but it's not completely. You know, you can't look at that. Say, for instance, in Carpe Diem, which mm. is also another Stefan Feld game that we really like. Yeah. Uh, it's very clear on the little cheat sheet what's happening. On this cheat sheet, it's kind of clear, but there are. It, yeah, we it's had clear a, once you get used to it. We had to jump back to the rule book quite a few times. Yeah. Particularly on the yellow. Well, the, um, the yellow ones aren't on that cheat sheet. You that, have to go to that's right, yeah. They're, basically, they're monasteries, and the monasteries give you kind of special power, as if yeah, you like. Yeah, individual um, things, yeah. Yeah, and, and he, there are 26 or so different monasteries, and, and they're all individual, and they all do a different thing. So, for instance, you might buy monastery number seven, and monastery number seven might enable you to um, place a, a building anywhere you like mm. without worrying about what dice number it is. Or you get a working man as well as a coin when you sell something. Or, yeah, so yeah. there are lots of weird little different, so you always have to kind of refer back to the, the manual, uh, the rule book, just to see what they do, which, <laughs> yeah, it is a little bit weird. I mean, there, there are little icons on them, but they're so small and they're not massively obvious. So also, you, just little, to make sure. Also, a little thing, the cheat sheet was double-sided. Yes. So what you do on your go and what you get so I kept going like it was a bit annoying having to yeah <laughs> yeah get that keep flip the cheat sheet over all yeah time. that's true actually yeah. yeah um so anyway you basically go ahead like this um mm. and take your two dice actions and then the other person takes their two dice actions and obviously slowly you get whittling away through the board of the hexes yeah. uh, other actions you can take are um for instance if you've got um a number one and you've got a good uh with a number one dice mm. uh, image on it, say for instance a wine or something like yeah. that. I think it's wine and uh, yeah, bread and cheese, whatever grape. Or, yeah. Yeah. So if you've got a little good that's got the number one, you could say, well, I'll sell all my number one goods, yeah. whatever they are, um, mustard, let's say, you, and basically turn those over and put them face down so the sort of crate side is showing, mm. and uh, that scores you points, victory points, and. Points and coins, or just points? I can't remember. Uh, you get something anyway. I can't remember. Yeah, again, this is the confusing <laughs> thing. You have to look back to the uh, rule book and it's only. So you, you can sell the goods like that. Um, mm -hmm. Also, you can, if you, you get a couple of silver coins, you get, I think you get one silver coin if you're the first player, two silver coins if you're a second player, mm. and you get two workers, or one worker, two workers, mm. that kind of thing, when you start. And those enable you to. Um, the workers enable you to up or down your dice pip by one. That was useful. I found that useful. Yeah. So, so you just chuck in a worker and it enables you yeah. to change the dice roll. Like that. Uh, the silver coins enable you to buy one of the hexes that are in the little black depot in the middle. So they're only available for purchase. You can't roll dice to get them. Although there are some monasteries that allow you to take those. <laughs> so you have to keep an eye out for that. Um, and... Uh, uh, <laughs> get, we'll get back to that again. Um, <laughs> so, stay with us. Um, stay with us. <laughs> so, so you've got the money you can buy things with. You've got the workers you can adjust the dice with. You mm -hmm. can just buy and sell goods. You can move uh, tiles into your area. You can lay the tiles in your area. First person to um, cover a whole colour area mm -hmm. gets a bonus point. There's a little bonus set of bonus, bonus chips oh, in yeah. each colour. Okay. First person gets five points. Second person gets two points. Um, there are uh, there's a section there's like a green area which is for Pasture. farm yeah farming animals. Mm -hmm. um, you get points for if you if you grab a, an animal tile and then you manage to lay that tile, you get points for the number of animals that are in that. So if it's three pigs, you get three points. Mm -hmm. And then if you manage to lay another tile next to that one, which are another three pigs, you would then get six points. So yeah. three for each set. I like that. Uh, and if you do another one build up again so you mm. kind of score them more than once if you Good. join them up and then if you do a different animal a separate three points but you don't again, I think, think there's a monastery for that as well. <laughs> there's a, probably a monastery that adjusts that gives you extras um, and the, the thing with the monasteries as well <laughs> the thing with the monasteries they tend to say if you've got this monastery in your uh, area duchy, you in your duchy it is a duchy yeah if you've got this area in your duchy sorry if you've got this monastery in your duchy mm -hmm. Uh, then you can do X, Y, Z or claim extra this, that, the other for your action. Yeah. So you've constantly, and this is where you kind of fell down, you've constantly got to keep an eye on what monasteries you have already got laid out because if you do action X, huh, I've got a monastery that covers that. Now you cannot, try as you might, well, I, I luckily I only had one monastery. Oh yeah, to have one monastery and I had six. 
Or seven. Yeah, so <laughs> all the time you were kind of, your head was exploding trying to think, what am I enabled to do extra that I couldn't yeah. do because of this dice roll because I've got these monasteries and I can't remember but what they are, so my, let's go back to the rule Maybe book. my user error where I shouldn't have put so many monsters in, but I didn't know um, well, they yeah. were there up for grabs and they were, they were exactly. meant to help me. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, again, quick proviso with this, uh, this review. We have had this on the shelf for a long time and we've not played it. We've only played it the once before this review. Mm -hmm. Um, if you so, played it again, I wouldn't pick as many monasteries. Yeah, so please bear that in mind when we when we get to the sort of review uh, scores and stuff like that. <laughs> so anyway, a nice kind of you know a nice process. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the process of um, the way they it plays. Picking the, picking the hexes and laying them in and using the different dice yeah. and thinking which dice I use for which. That was really yeah, good. all I of like that it. is really nice. Uh, and, yeah. and basically, it goes over. So you've got these five phases and five rounds in each phase. What just said th then the whole description that was just a one round. Yes. Of one phase. Well, exactly, yes. And then so you, once you've gone through all those um, five, rounds. five rounds, then you score. If you've, if you've managed to build a mine, you get a oh, couple, yeah. couple of extra silver coins, coins yeah. and um, and you score your victory points. And Oh, you get victory points for um, completing an area as well as as well as getting the bonus points, you get victory points for actually completing mm. it. So that's another weird thing. In fact, I think it scores three times. You get victory points for the number of tiles in the area. Uh, yeah. You get victory points for being the first to finish that colour of an area, or mm -hmm. the second to finish mm -hmm. that colour of an area. And you get victory points for uh, the the time, wh the whichever phase. phase you were in. Phase you're in if you did you it in phase it. one, you get two points or something like that. You get more points earlier yeah. than so, yeah, phase. That's right, yeah, phase one, if you finish a, a, a colour, you get sort of ten points. Mm. But in phase five, if you finish a one, you get two yeah. points or something like that. So there are three <laughs> scores for f just completing a coloured area. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think, and a good difference, a good way to explain our differences in our tastes is when you move on to phase two. I'm like, oh my god, it's only phase two. And you're like, oh, phase two, right? Let's come on, it's only phase two, yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, where it says uh, the time to play, seventy to one twenty minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, it's, we were, so I can see how it's a long we were game. A good hour and a half, I think maybe. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So anyway, that's pretty much the way the game plays. You just work your way through these. I took a long time um, staring at my. <laughs> a lot of AP in this, isn't there? Analysis, yes. analysis paralysis. If you don't know what that means, uh, where, whereby you've got so many options, you cannot, for the life of you, figure out which is the best one for you. So you, in the end, you just say, "Oh, I'll just do this because I don't mm. know." Um, you handled it a lot more better, a lot more better, a lot better than I. Did. Well, I'm used to this kind of game, aren't I? Yeah. I like this kind and you of like game. This kind of game yeah. yeah, I mean, so so we'll jump on now to. I mean, I can't really tell you any more really about how the game plays because that's pretty much it. That's it's pretty much fairly it. simple, quite long, uh, and. Uh, you said it was like a. Um, what do you say it was like? I say it's like playing a spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it kind of is. I mean, it's I like love playing six spreadsheets for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do, like I say, we love Carpe Diem, which is uh, another one of Stefan Feld's. Yeah, so this is quite a similar game to it's Carpe Diem, quite as similar. in like it's all there's something's different things are going on, and you're trying to build a city, don't uh, yeah, you? Yeah. While things are going on, but I found Carpe Diem a lot easier. Well, I would say the probably the difference, I, I guess the difference is with Carpe Diem, uh, you have a let's say for instance you've got ten different types of things you can build. Hmm. But they all build in the same way. Yeah. And then you've got a little cheat sheet that says if you build X, then you get Y. And Simple. in Cup of Dim, there's <laughs> Spreadsheet <styling>. In Cup <laughs> of Dim, there's phases as well. Whereas this is all happening at one time. Yeah. Everything was going on. Well, there's phases and rounds in this, of course. But I mean, like, you, yes. could, you can, as well as laying your tiles, you've got to sell goods. You've got to do this. You, you mean gotta, in this? Yeah, and in, you've got to sell goods. You've got to think, shall I sell goods? Shall I change my work on Yeah, so th so this one is kind of similar to Carpe Diem mm. in, in that respect, but is is a lot more I just personally involved. found it more confusing. Yeah. It's just a bit too much to think about for me. Yeah, it was. it is just a lot of... That, 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 for instance, instead of just 10 buildings you can build, there are probably 25 different buildings, plus the 26 monasteries, which are <laughs> all different. Um, and, uh, they, could have done, they could have done with less monasteries, to be fair. They could have. Yeah, yeah, they could have. <laughs> uh, and, well, to be fair, this comes with a couple of expansions in it as well. We never touched the expansions, oh, so wow. I can imagine that would just layer it right up. And you'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so, um, but so I think I think I had too many monitors in my air, in the area. Yeah, so, so you had too much to think about. Yeah, anyway, every about. go trying. And to I found that I forgot things. I forgot halfway through the game. I thought 
oh my god, I could sell some goods. I've, oh, I didn't sell the goods. I had yeah. five and I had another five goods and I didn't sell them because I just forgot. Yeah, you, you forgot that you could sell goods and with I, a dice roll. I forgot and... that um, halfway through the game I noticed that you were buying a lot of the black area mm. depot and I thought, oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, so in, the, any of them. The, the central depot is completely only buying with cash. And yeah. so basically every time I got some money, and you can do that as an action, your two actions are your two dice rolls, but you can also oh. at any time use cash to buy from the black area. And you kind of forgot that. I or, forgot. I was just well, so to be busy. fair, I didn't. I don't think you got as much money as me. I kept getting money oh, for yeah, some true. some special tile. Yeah. My monastery, I think, enabled me mm. to get extra cash. So every go, I was mm. buying a tile from the central. I think if it was if you, if you took the goods bit out of it, where you have to sell the goods thing, I know it's an integral part of the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I took the monasteries out. Maybe I would have enjoyed it more. Yeah. It's just yeah, a bit over so, the edge of confusing for me. Yeah, I get that. And and to be fair, and I love this kind of game, but it, even for me it was kind of, wow, really? <laughs> <laughs> that said, I think if I played this a few more times and or if I played it with somebody that has played it a lot and therefore they're kind of mm. very comfortable with it and it plays quicker and you you know yeah. there's no kind of real head scratching. Played, played it with similar-minded people. Yeah, then <laughs> I would I would enjoy this game a lot more. Because um, this, I mean, this is ranked. What are you saying? This is. <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. The, uh, this uh, this is ranked number fifteen in the top uh, games uh, on Board Game Geek. So this is very highly I suppose rated. Some people like being confused. Yeah, and well, having it's, a, it's a lot, about... lot of accountants um, in the uh, Board Game Geek polls. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> so anyway, so I mean, so, it, I do so, think it's a good game. Yeah, so it's just to clarify then, uh, because obviously we're doing this review to give you an idea as to whether or not you'd like to play it. Mm. I would like to play it again. I'd like to play it more than just the one time we've played it. Yeah. Um, I'd like to give it more a chance. I'd like to play it with people that have, have played. No, I mean, I'd like to play it with people that, that are better than me at it. Yeah. So that I get to learn sort of the strategies. Yeah. I don't know if there's much, I guess there's a bit of strategy, but yeah. it's mainly just Definitely. reacting to your roles and doing what you can. Mm. Um, but there's so much to do. I would play completely. it again if I had to. <laughs> right here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't be like jumping at bits to play it. Yeah. But I would just to see if I enjoyed it more now you without know. all the monasteries. Well, it's a one to four player game, so I'm going to play it a couple of times, maybe solo, just to sort oh, of yeah. see if I can get. Uh, a different feel for it or get a different experience. I'm not sure it would be any better with four players. I think. I guess it would take a hell of a lot longer. Yeah. Yeah, five phases. I think it took players. us so long because I was just staring at my Dutchie for like the half an hour. The other thing. Going, the what other am thing, I supposed to be doing? Yeah. I have no idea what I'm doing. The other thing I noticed as well, uh, towards the end of the game, certainly, not so much at the beginning, in the, in the third and fourth and fifth, definitely the fourth and fifth phases, what happens when uh, when you finish a phase? So you sold all your five good tiles into the not sold them, um, you know, rolled the white dice and placed them. Mm. Oh, that was something else we didn't mention. I'll tell you that in a second. <laughs> um, was that uh, at the end of the, that phase, you clear all the tiles off the board and then replenish those yes. tiles with fresh ones, ra mm. randomly placed. Um, we noticed that later on in the game, sort of. When you got even second round in, there were no tiles were, left. Yeah, yeah, they true. kind of all gone. I mean, like, this is a so bit you spent weird. most of so the round just the, like, yeah, getting the last, more coins, didn't you? Yeah, the last two or three rounds, I was just kind of basically can't do anything. Yeah, I, I, no, there's nothing to do. I got no. I can't buy any tiles because there aren't any tiles. Maybe so I can't, playing it wrong then. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. I think we got it right. But yeah, yeah. so that was a weird thing. Um, yeah, the other thing that I just thought that we, you can do is. Um, uh, I can't remember how you do it, but you can. T oh, if you. Uh, no, I literally cannot remember. This is the confusing thing. You <laughs> yeah, know, it's confusing. How you get the um, the goods from the depots, all the goods. Oh, I think it's a certain hex that you lay down. Is it? Oh, oh it's, yes, a ship. it's the ships. It's a ship, yes. You like the ship. I like the ships. The ship. <laughs> That's right. So there are blue tiles, uh, blue hexes, and if you get a ship in place and um, lay a ship on a. You get a point, you get, uh, a bridge point, and you also get. Um, all the goods in one depot. Bridge point, is another thing. Oh. So the bridge point gives you basically a first player advantage of is uh, the turn order. So mm -hmm. it moves you forward in turn order. Let's do scores. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, let's do scores. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so uh, I'll go first, shall I? Because this yeah, is me begging good, you good to news play first, this. Yeah. For, yeah. Good, news first. good news first. <laughs> okay, well, so again, I'm being quite generous with this in the fact that I know there's a better game in there than we than we played yeah. on our one go. Uh, so, I'm good enough, so I'm going <laughs> to, so I'm going to give this a seven and a half. Okay. Which is, uh, bearing in mind how it played out for us yeah. as a couple, 
Seven and a half is quite generous. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, yes, I I like it. <laughs> I just don't love I it. I just don't, I don't love it. As I say, it might be my problem of not understanding it properly or too many monasteries, and it's just it was just a bit too much for me to love it. Yeah, I get that. Um, so I'm at five and a half. So it's just just above average. It's okay. I yeah, it's I just a bit above. Okay. I fully understand that. So for if you guys are thinking um, about this. Uh, I wouldn't take it to my family to play. I don't think oh, my crumbs, my no. parents would be like, what? Yeah. Let's put if, the kettle on. If you're thinking about this, way. can can we play this as a couple? Yes, you can. Yeah, you could. Um, but obviously, just take on board the things we've said. Mm. It is quite a lot to handle. If you're happy with that, give it a go. Um, mm. And also, if you tell us if you've played it and you have a different opinion to us. Let yeah, us absolutely. Yeah, that'd be nice actually if you've played it and you think, what are you talking about? It's a brilliant game. Yeah. Yep, tell, tell us. us what we've missed really yeah to, uh, yeah absolutely because we, we do I, i'm desperate to enjoy this game and i did you did but, enjoy it yeah but it's yeah it almost seemed like a chore almost i probably brought you down yeah <laughs> smack me down <laughs> all my moaning <laughs> i was like this at the end of the game oh i thought it was going to be again. so far we'll play it one more time <laughs> um so there you go anyway What's so uh, 13 13 13 is it yeah. 13 Seven and a half, five and a half. Yeah, 13. Um, so, yeah, uh, more than average, um, yeah. but weirdly not in the top 20 of Board Game Geek level of scoring. You know, mm. 15 Board Game Geek, wow, mm. highly rated. So, you know, take take it with a pinch of salt or a 13, but take all our, yep. our kind of comments about it. I recommend giving it a go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Okay, well, uh, this was a special request from one of our uh, subscribers, so thank you for asking for that. Um, so if you've got a game in our list that you'd like us uh, to check out, please yeah. do leave a comment in the um, comments below and we'll We're try and to get serve. to that. Yeah, we'll get to that as soon as we can. <laughs> um, so hopefully this has helped you decide whether or not whether you want to play yeah, Castles of Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.